20 years ago, the idea of a BMW SUV would have been absurd, but now it's a staple part of the company's lineup. And it all started with the BMW X5. Over 2 million units have been sold since it was introduced in 1999, and now we've got this fourth generation model. We've come all the way out here to Atlanta to try it out. So let's get into it. Now the first thing you want to know is that this car is a lot bigger than the previous model. It's now nearly 5 meters long and over 2 meters wide. It is massive, but it doesn't look so big and that's partly because of this huge front grille which makes everything else on the car look a little bit smaller. Like on the 8 series, it's joined in the middle. These headlights are LED as standard and you can also spec laser lights as an option. Now around the back of the car you'll find these muscular rear haunches and this S-shaped character line which give it a real commanding presence. Now these lines flow into the three-dimensional tail lights, these are LED and they kind of lose a little bit of that L shape that is very typical of BMW. Overall though, I think this is a very handsome car, don't you agree? Open the split tailgate, both sides are electrically powered now and you'll get 650 litres of boot space. There's also a electrically powered parcel shelf that falls away into the boot floor. Now on the inside, BMW has made a lot of effort to make the X5 look and feel more luxurious. There's lots of metal trim around the air vent and some of the controls, there's open pore wood trim, lots of soft touch leather materials and an optional gear lever and IGF controller made from glass, an idea that was probably stolen from the Volvo XC90. Speaking of iDrive, this new X5 comes with BMW Operating System 7.0 and this is the first BMW to have such a system. Now as you can see, the previous tile interface has been replaced by larger panels that show you more information as you need it. And there's now also a personal assistant that you can operate using the phrase, Hey BMW. What's also new is this instrument display which has a reverse direction rev counter. Now what that does is that it gives you more space to show you more information such as a map of the navigation. Now both of these screens are available in sizes up to 12.3 inches. As you would expect in a car so big, there's plenty of legroom and headroom both at the front and at the back. And there are also plenty of new convenience features such as heated and cooled cup holders, massage seats, and wireless charging. Available as an option is a panoramic glass roof that now features a sky lounge feature which has been taken from the 7th series. Now this has LED lights imprinted into the glass that creates a night sky pattern. To launch the X5 is available in four variants. There's the car we're driving in, the X-Drive 40i, which has a 3-litre turbocharged straight 6 petrol engine. There's also a plug-in hybrid model, the X-Drive 45e, but that's only coming next year. For now though, we're concentrating on the X-Drive 40i. This has 340 horsepower and 450 newton meters of torque. And like the best of BMW straight sixes, it's very, very powerful and very, very torquey low down. And it revs all the way up to the red line. It's also supremely smooth and it has a really nice engine note. Proper straight six noise. Listen to this. The ZF 8-speed automatic is also very good. It responds very smoothly and very quickly, even when you're in comfort mode. You just push on the accelerator and the car just scoots forward. Now the old X5 was a car that sort of moved away from the typical BMW Ultimate driving machine ethos. It was a little bit soft and it wasn't really very composed around the bends. Now to counteract this, BMW has done two things. First, it has made adaptive suspension as standard and it's also offering two axle air suspension. The previous car only had air suspension at the rear and it was only self-leveling. With this air suspension, you can adjust the height, you want to lower it if you want or raise it if you so wish. But the car will also do it on the fly 
lowering the car at higher speeds to reduce drag. Now, the changes are profound. Turn into the corner and the car feels more keyed in. The steering is sharper and the car just generally feels more agile. It shrinks around you even though it's such a massive car. There's also very little body roll and plenty of grip thanks to the improved X-Drive system. Now what the air suspension can't do is bend the laws of physics. So the ride is a little bit firm on these large 21 inch alloys that we're riding on. I suspect with smaller wheels, the ride would be a little bit better. But even so, as it is, when you, once you get on the highway, it's very smooth. And there's very little road and wind noise, especially with this acoustic glass windscreen and side windows. It is a very, very big car though. Even on these huge American roads, placing the car on the road still takes a little bit more care than I'm used to. So I'm not sure how it would fare on our usual lorongs and small alleyways and what have you. But otherwise, this is a very competent car to drive. Now aside from the M Sport Professional Package, BMW also offers the X5 with an X Off-Road Package. Now this is something new for BMW and it allows the X5 to go a little bit further than you normally drive it. Now with the X Off-Road Package, you've got four different settings. You've got gravel, snow, sand and rocks. Now we're going on to the rock setting. The package consists of air suspension, different software calibration for the throttle and the gear shift and the M Sport differential here tuned for off-road driving. There's also underbody protection included in the package. Car's handling it quite well, but we'll see when we get to some more difficult sections of this track. Yep, got it. Ooh. This is impressive. Come up over the crest and there you go. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So I forgot to tell you this air suspension in this setting raises up to 40 millimeters. So you've got enough ground clearance. If for some reason you get stuck on breakover, you've got this sort of touchdown detection system which raises the suspension by another 30 millimeters so you're all, in, all in all you get a 70 millimeter increase in ride height and that will allow you to get over any of the humps that you might get stuck on so what's interesting is that this car it doesn't make any sense if you're wading in water. When it does that, it raises the suspension to its maximum setting and it closes the front grille shutters so that none of the water gets into the engine. Oh yeah, this is tricky. This is going to turn around and go and it slides. Ooh, whoa! -ho -ho. Yeah. This car is fitted with summer tires. Normal tires to you and me. And as you can see, it does go off-road pretty well. But, if you want to go a bit further off the road, you can even specify all-terrain tyres, which are a first for BMW and it allows this car to go even further off the road, if you so wish. We're used to seeing this back home on pickup truck drives, you know, and they're showing the maximum off-road performance of these things. And now you can do it on a BMW SUV and that's really, really impressive. Now it would have been easy for BMW to rest on its laurels with the new X5. It has the X7 coming after all. It could have made the same very soft, very comfortable SUV that it did before. But no, BMW has reinvented what the X5 stands for. It's now better to drive and crucially, it's now actually capable off the road. I think it's a solid achievement and you'd be happy to have one.